Hello everyone, welcome to our comments and answers TJ channel. I hope all of you are doing well. In this video, we're going to prepare for the study of the book, Enjoy Life, for the week of June 10th to 16th. This week, we will study chapter 11, paragraphs 5 to 10, and the boxes on page 89. So, let's begin. Question 5. How did Barnabas and Saul preach in Cyprus? Barnabas and Saul traveled from Antioch to Cyprus. They first arrived in Salamis and preached in the synagogues. Then they crossed the island on foot and shared the message in several important cities. Additional Comments Barnabas and Saul started by preaching in the synagogues of the Jews in Cyprus, as mentioned in Acts 13, 5. This initial approach shows their respect for local customs and their strategy to first reach the Jewish community with the Gospel message. We learn that it's important to adapt our communication of the gospel according to the cultural and religious context of the people we are addressing, seeking points of connection to effectively convey Christ's message. Comments from Box on page 89 The Synagogues of the Jews Synagogues are places where Jews gather to worship Jehovah and learn from Him. Originally, the word simply meant assembly or gathering, but over time it was used to refer to the physical place where they held their religious meetings. It is believed that synagogues originated during the exile in Babylon about 70 years ago or shortly thereafter. Jews went there to worship Jehovah, study the scriptures, and hear teachings. By the first century, Every city in Palestine had at least one synagogue, and larger cities had several. In Jerusalem, there were many synagogues. After the exile, not all Jews returned to Palestine. Many dispersed to other regions due to business or other reasons. Since the 5th century BCE, there were Jewish communities in many parts of the Persian Empire. Over time, these communities formed Jewish neighborhoods around the Mediterranean Sea. Together, these scattered communities were known as the Diaspora, and wherever they lived, they established synagogues to maintain their religious traditions. In synagogues, every Sabbath, the Law of God was read and explained from a raised platform called the Bema, surrounded by seats on three sides. All faithful men had the opportunity to participate in reading the scriptures, in explanations, and in the speeches offered. This text shows us how synagogues were important centers of religious and community life for Jews outside of Israel. It also teaches us about the importance of gathering to worship God, learn from His Word, and strengthen faith in community. Question 6 and 7, Part A Who was Sergius Paulus? Why did his counselor oppose the good news? Sergius Paulus was an important Roman official. His counselor, Bar Jesus, was a sorcerer who opposed the Christian message because he wanted to maintain his influence over Sergius Paulus. Additional Comments In Acts 13, 6-7, Sergius Paulus is presented as an intelligent man who shows interest in the teachings of God. This indicates he had a receptive heart to hear the message of Paul and Barnabas. We learn that in sharing our faith, 
it is essential to be attentive to those who show genuine interest in learning more about God and be willing to respond clearly and lovingly to their spiritual questions and needs. In Acts 13, 8, Bar Jesus, also known as Elimas, actively opposed the kingdom message preached by Paul and Barnabas. As counselor to Sergius Paulus, he feared losing his influence if Sergius embraced the Christian faith. We learn that the power of the gospel can threaten power structures and false spiritual practices, and we must be prepared to face opposition when proclaiming Christ's truth. Question 6 and 7, Part B What did Saul do to prevent Bar-Jesus from extinguishing Sergio Paul's interest? Saul, also known as Paul, rebuked Bar-Jesus with strong words and temporarily blinded him as a miracle. This impressed Sergius Paulus and led him to believe in the Christian message. Additional Comments In Acts 13, 10-11, Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, harshly confronts Bar-Jesus and makes him temporarily blind as an act of divine judgment. This event shows Paul's spiritual authority and God's protection over those who sincerely seek the truth. We learn that when facing spiritual opposition, we can trust in God's power to defend and protect the work of His kingdom while boldly proclaiming the message of salvation. Question 8. How can we imitate the courage of Paul? We can imitate Paul's courage by boldly defending the truth, even when facing opposition. We should use our words wisely and not be afraid to confront what is spiritually wrong, as Paul did with Bar-Jesus. Additional Comments Colossians 4 6 exhorts us to let our speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Paul demonstrated courage by confronting Bar Jesus firmly but also with respect and love. We learn that imitating Paul's courage means being brave to defend the truth, yet being prudent and wise in how we communicate the Christian message, always seeking reconciliation and understanding. In Acts 13, 10, Paul rebukes Bar-Jesus for perverting the straight paths of Jehovah. This teaches us that imitating Paul's courage involves not remaining silent in the face of falsehood and evil, but being willing to speak the truth boldly and with spiritual authority. We must be prepared to face spiritual adversities with the same conviction and faith that Paul demonstrated. Question 9. What example did Paul and Barnabas give to today's congregation leaders? Paul and Barnabas set an example by working together in humility, without seeking personal recognition. This is important for today's congregation leaders, who must serve with humility and remember that we are all equal before God. Additional Comments Matthew 23, 8, 12 teaches us about humility in service. Paul and Barnabas provided a clear example by working together in humility and without seeking the limelight. This shows us that congregation leaders should serve with humility and love, recognizing that serving God and His people is the true measure of greatness in the Kingdom of God. Matthew 23, 8, 12 teaches us about humility in service. Paul and Barnabas provided a clear example by working together in humility and without seeking the limelight. This shows us that congregation leaders should serve with humility and love, recognizing that serving God and His people is the true measure of greatness in the Kingdom of God. Question 10. 
What was the journey like between Perga and Antioch of Pisidia? The journey between Perga and Antioch of Pisidia was difficult and dangerous. It included a mountainous region with robbers and was through elevated terrain. Despite these challenges, Paul and Barnabas continued their mission to spread the Christian message. Additional Comments The journey between Perga and Antioch of Pisidia was difficult and dangerous, passing through a mountainous region with the risk of robbery. This physical journey reflects the difficulties and challenges that Paul and Barnabas faced in their mission to preach the gospel. We learn that following Christ can involve facing adversities and physical risks, but it also shows us the commitment and determination of the early Christian missionaries in spreading the faith. In Acts 13, 14, we see that John Mark decided to return to Jerusalem during the journey between Perga and Antioch of Pisidia. This teaches us about the importance of persevering and staying steadfast in the mission, despite challenges and changing circumstances. We learn that in our Christian life, it is crucial to remain faithful and committed to the purpose God has given us, even when facing unexpected difficulties. Well, those have been the practical answers about the Congregation Book Study this week. I hope it will be very helpful to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Sending you a big hug, and may Jehovah bless and protect you always. <laughs>